Aleluya. Praise the Lord. Jesucristo. Amen. We'll soon get it together here. We are honored to be here today. Amen. It is indeed a blessing to be here. Yes, it is. The Lord. Amen. What I'm going to share with you a little bit is a little bit of my story. Amen. Uh, in talking about my story, um, the best way that I can think about it is is looking at the scriptures that have really blessed my life. And there is a scripture that has really blessed my life and that pretty much just explains the Christian journey. And so I'm trying to make sure we get there. Amen. Trying to get this thing together. Well, no problem. Don't worry about it. I think I get it. Okay, here we go. All right. Now, one of the things I want to share with you is, is something that is very, very important. I think that um, it will bless you because it's a scripture that, that really motivates me. You asked me to share a little bit of what pushes me, what motivates me. And this story is one of my favorite stories because... Uh, what it does, is it encourages me in several ways, amen. You're going to find that I need everyone to listen very carefully to the story because the story has many messages, amen. amen. And the messages all have different phases, but they represent the, the Christian walk. And I'm going to read the scripture again. Uh, thank you, you did a great job. I'm going to read it again because I want everybody to remember what you said. A few days later when Jesus... Again, entered Capernaum because that was like a headquarters for him. The people heard that he had come home. They gathered in such a large number. Luke said that there was noise that he was in the house. Anytime Jesus is in the house, there ought to be noise in the house. Mm -hmm. Amen? Amen. And so that's what it says in Luke telling this same story. And then it says, they gathered in such a large number that there was no room left, not even outside the door. And he preached to them the word. Some men came bringing to him a paralyzed man carrying, carried by four of them. Since they could not get him to Jesus because of the crowd, they made an opening in the room above Jesus by digging through it and then lowered the man, the mat the man was lying on mm -hmm. and when Jesus seeing their faith said to them the paralyzed man, son your sins are forgiven mm -hmm. now this is one of my favorite stories so I'm gonna uh, just enjoy it a little bit here because it's an awesome story. as a matter of fact this story is so awesome that I can stop right here and just talk about the fact that there were four men. See, because four things happened that, that is nothing but God. Mm -hmm. Number one is that they had faith in God. Mm -hmm. That Jesus would make a difference in this man's life. Mm -hmm. Number two, they had faith that they could make a difference. Mm -hmm. That they could help change someone's life. Mm -hmm. Number three, the man who was paralyzed had to be willing to go. Mm -hmm. yes. To be changed. Yes. They didn't drag him onto the pallet. They, they, he got on. Mm -hmm. Number four. They cared enough about him to want his situation to change. Mm -hmm. Do you have friends like that to want your situation to change? If you don't, you need some new friends. Yeah. Amen. 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 They wanted his situation to be different. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So they began on the journey. But I have to say something right here. I'm going to leave with you four principles. The very first principle is this. Before you start this journey, you have to have faith in the finish mm -hmm. or confidence in the conclusion. Yeah. If you don't have faith in the finish yeah. or confidence in the conclusion, you will not start the journey. Yeah. <laughs> Then they walked the four.
more carrying the paralyzed man. Now, I believe that it still takes four people to get people to Jesus. Amen? The Father, the Son, the Holy Ghost, and you. And you. The problem that we have this day is that the Holy Ghost is doing his part. The Father is doing his part. The Son is doing his part. But people are still sliding off the path because we can't hold up our part. And they're sliding off of the path on the journey. Not making it to Jesus because we keep letting them slide off the pallet. So they made it to Jesus. They, they kept on going and these four men cared enough. They were determined. They were, they were committed and they got to the door. And they looked, trying to find a way to get in. It was so crowded that they couldn't even get in. Now, first of all, let me tell you right now, everybody that's in the house is not going to help you see Jesus. How many times have you had people say, I left because of those church people? Well, here, yeah, don't ever leave Jesus because of no church people. Because not everybody in church will help you see Jesus. But you need to make sure you have four friends <laughs> that believe that he can change things. Oh, you need the four friends that know exactly where he's going and made their minds up. They're committed to the cause. All you need is four friends. See, this is the thing you have to ask people sometimes. Who's your circle of friends? And let me just say this. If you come to church and you can not come, and no one call you, then you need to engage more. Yeah. Yes. See, because if you can disappear yeah. and nobody miss you, mm -hmm. you have not connected. Oh yeah. my God. Yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. So they had four friends that looked in the door and, and, and the people that were in there wasn't no help. So something happened. I'm, let me just say this. You know what most people would do? Well, I gave it a good shot. I tried. I made a great effort. <laughs> and they would go back home. But I'm here to tell you right now, to get up, you got to sometimes look up. And they began to look up. And here comes the second principle. Sometimes you got to dare to be different. <laughs> Not only are you, do you have to have faith in the finish and confidence in the conclusion, but sometimes you have to dare to do what is different. Sometimes you have to break out of what everybody else is doing. Sometimes you got to do the unconventional. Sometimes whatever it takes to get to Jesus. Come on now. You have to be willing. And so they to get up, you got to sometimes look up. Yes. <laughs> so they looked up. And then they did what I think is an awesome thing. Not only did they dare to be different. But they disregard, they dis deny the difficulty. Yes. Mm. It ain't easy carrying somebody up, up a, a side of a house. Uh -huh. People don't go up the side of a house very easily. Yes. So they were climbing up the side of the house. And they got that man to the roof. Yes. So already they had faith in the finish and they had confidence in the conclusion. Yes. They understood that everybody had to hold up their end of the pallet. Yes. They got to the door, but they were determined. They were committed. When most men and women would give up, yes. they dared to be different. Yes. They disregarded the difficulty yes. and they climbed up the side of the house. Amen. <laughs> now one of the things that I can be very clear about is I know that these were wise men. Amen. Amen. I knew that they were wise men because the Bible teaches that they, they tore up the roof and lowered the man in front of Jesus. Yes. Number one, they were wise enough to not go further than Jesus. And they were, were, they were smart enough not to land before they got to Jesus. Yes. They found out and got a sense of where he was. Like where he was. <laughs> they didn't go too far and they didn't stop too short. Yes. And they tore up the roof and lowered the man. Well, let me just say this to you right now. 
You can't just go tear people's roof up and think you don't have to pay the price. You can't just, just tear, tear up the roof and think you're not going to have to come back and, 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 and pay the cost. Amen. But see, what happened is they disregarded the dollar and they discounted the cost. Come on now. They, they tell it up and guess what? This is what we have to always remember to do if we're going to survive in this Christian war. You got to tear up anything that stands between you and Jesus. Amen. And it stands in the way to tear it up. If it's in the way, if it's impeding your walk, if it somehow, some kind of way it is a problem, you need to make sure you look up, climb up, look for Jesus, and tear up anything that is in the way between you and him. So, they lowered the man through the roof. And he landed in front of Jesus. And the Bible says Jesus seeing their faith. Now let me just make this very, very clear. Not only are you have confidence in the conclusion, not only are you supposed to, to dare to be different, not only are you supposed to deny the difficulty, sometimes you have to disregard the dollar or discount the cost. But guess what? There's another thing that you got to do. You got to have a faith that people can see. And they said, Jesus, seeing their faith, yes. said, come on, if you want to get Jesus' to attention, yes. you got to have some faith that he can see. Yes. <laughs> and Jesus said, guess what? Mm -hmm. Your sins are forgiven. Your shortcomings are forgiven. You're, you're, you're missing the mark and not being on your creative purpose. Not your, your, your disabilities have been forgiven. Everything, your sin." has been forgiven. And the man went back home. And that, that story has packed in it just so many things that I had to think about. These principles that came out of the story made me think about how I have to walk. Who do I associate myself? Do I have people around me who will carry me when I'm broken? See, the only way people can help you if you reveal that you're sick. <laughs> you can't go around and fake like you're okay when you're not okay. Yeah. Yeah. You got to have some friends. Mm -hmm. He started on the journey with some good friends. Mm -hmm. You need to find some folk in this church that will tell you the truth. Mm -hmm. And they're trying to go where you're going. Mm -hmm. They're trying to see Jesus just like you. So I always think about that story and I am super, super encouraged and, and, and I am blessed by it because it reminds me that, that I have to hold up my end. And, and, and part of what I'm doing now in the missions field is, is trying to hold up the pallet on my side. Let, let me just say this to you because this is a true statement. 29% of the world population does not know Jesus, has not even heard the name Jesus, does not even know who Jesus is. We went to India and there were people who, if you talked about Jesus and Moses and Peter and Paul, they would say, who's that? 29%. That is about two, two, about two to three billion people who doesn't know Jesus Christ. All missionary activity and monies go to missions work that is done in urban locations or places that have already been reached. Mm -hmm. They have already received, and when they say already been reached, meaning that they have access to at least a Bible and they have access to a church. They have been reached. There is a 3% amount of money and resources and missionary work that is done for the small 29% that have never heard the gospel. Three to four, no, two to four billion people. That's a lot of people who don't know Jesus. I don't know if they don't have no friends. <laughs> 
I don't know if we are willing to carry the pallet. I don't know if we're willing to do something different. But let me tell you what the concern is. When it is 3 o'clock, and I have to be somewhere at 4, I have more time. So I operate, I move as though I had more time. When I am 10 minutes away from being late, I, I mobilize, I move faster, I, I, I gather my strength and I move in a different way because I don't have as much time. Yeah. The problem that we must deal with is that even though we are closer to the last days, we say that often the last days, but even though things are growing worse, what happens is very simply this, we have not changed the pace of ministry. So when I'm almost late, I move faster. I'm, because I don't have as much time. But our ministries have stayed the same. And we have not taken seriously the prophetic calendar that tells us how the world is going to become. And so that is my job and my journey today. To challenge my brothers and my sisters to look at things slightly differently. To say that there are people that have never heard the gospel. There are people waiting on you. There are a people that need you to, to hold up your end of the pallet. There are people, let me just say there's a part in the very beginning um, that I need you to take note of. The four men cared about the outcome of their neighbor. We have to ask ourselves, do we care? I mean, really, do, do we really care? So I want to encourage you today by that story. I told you it won't be long. He, I had two hours, but I'm, I just, just decided to take a little bit of time. You know, he told me y'all were accustomed to two-hour messages. And so. But I just wanted to see if I could share my story, the story of the Bible that I love dearly, to share with you some things that is very crucial and principles that could help you. Please have faith in the finish and confidence in the conclusion. It's okay to go. It's okay to obey. Please hold up your end. The Holy Ghost... The Father, the Son, is not going to do it alone. They could. They don't need us. But the plan of salvation includes us. Mm -hmm. Number one, let me just say this to you. When you get to the door and church folks seem to be in the way, <laughs> find another way. Dare to be different. You don't have to be conventional. You don't have to do what other people are doing. Just stay within the core values and tenets of the gospel. Dare to be different. Take on a little difficulty. Because guess what? What is the symbol of the Christian faith? A cross. How are you going to have a cross as a symbol of your faith and don't think you have no sacrifice? The cross itself is a symbol of sacrifice. Our symbol is what? A cross. Sacrifice. And let us tear up every obstacle that is in the way. Let's get past the things that, that hold us down and bog us down. One of the biggest messages that I have in, in, in boundless to other ministries and missionaries and pastors is, are two things, and I'm, I'm going to share this this evening as well. The two things that I struggle with. Number one is that the Bible says God so loved the world. God did not create boundaries. He did not create fences. He did not create borders. He did not create uh, 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 guidelines and everything. The, the world is your mission field. The world is your ministry field. The world, God so loved the world. And those who are the image of Christ in the earth, those who are the body of Christ in the earth should also agree and love the world. Therefore, you not struck, 
You're not limited to a country. You're not limited to a state. You're not limited to a region. Amen. You you have no borders. You have no no fences. You have nothing restricting you. You go where the God of our salvation sends you. Number two. Oh man, I ain't trying to go there. Oh Lord, I, that ain't what I'm trying to do. I'm not. Uh, that looks like that's too tough. First of all, you don't tell God where you're not going. The attitude of the believer is what? Father, send me. I'll go. Father, whatever you want me to do, I'll do it. Lord, now this is what I've discovered about growing up as a Christian. When I first came to Christ, it was God, God save me. God bless me. God keep me. God give me money. God give me a job. God give me, give me, give me. God give me, give me. It wasn't until I became more mature that I started to say, God, what do you want? How can I serve you? How can I bless you? How can I be with you? What I'm saying is that if you're still saying, give me, give me, can I have? Then you still may be immature in the faith. Because maturity says, God, what can I do? God, where am I to be? God, what should I say? When should I say it? Where should I say it? So I'm here today to say to you guys, once again, remember those principles because they are what will propel you forward in your journey. They are what is, and guess what? Find some good friends in the faith that if you feel weak, they'll carry you on their shoulders. That's the problem. We don't have nobody to carry us. And we don't want anybody in our lives that's going to tell us what to do. Or that's going to tell us the truth. We don't get those kind of relationships. We get people who will acquiesce and people who will find that, that one person you think that is fair but mean. <laughs> and one person that you know you don't want to hear what they got to say out their mouth, but you know that what they say is real. Find that one person who will put you on the pallet and carry you. Even though you might not like what they say. That's called growth. And that's called maturity. So I'm going to yield my other two hours to, <laughs> to the pastor. But I did not want to speak long. I just wanted to tell you that because you eat an elephant one bite at a time. I need you to chew on what you heard today. Because what is going to happen is that we need us all to be better believers. Amen? And a better church. God bless you.